establish themselves as the team to be. They're number one in the rankings. They conquered Hobart earlier this year, and they'll have the home field advantage today. Under mostly blue skies, very warm and somewhat humid conditions, Selby Field in Delaware, Ohio, the home of Ohio Wesleyan University, is the site of the 1988 Division III National Lacrosse Championship game of the NCAA. It matches the Statesmen of Hobart, who are 13-4, and, and the Battling Bishops of Ohio Wesleyan winners are 14 in a row. They are 15-1. And hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolcher. And this one simply boils down to two of the most basic ingredients in all of sports. It is offense against defense. You're absolutely right. Uh, Hobart's scoring about 16 goals a game scoring. On the other hand, the battling bishops are allowing only 4.5. They use basically zone defense. That's a phenomenal average, 4.5 goals. So you're right. It's a classic matchup, offense against defense, and somebody's got to win. Lacrosse is a game where the coaches have not really taken the game away from the players. They usually let them do what they can do best. But the zone defense of Ohio Wesleyan certainly has produced problems in the past for Hobart College. And today we asked Mike Pressler, the coach of Ohio Wesleyan, about the number one concern he has going into this game against Hobart. Well, first of all, when you play Hobart, you've got to cut off the transition game. They're very much an up-and-down kind of team, tremendous athletes in the midfield who uh, love to run and gun, and uh, we cannot allow them to do that to us today. You know, we got to cut the field in half, make it more controlled, a uh, six-on-six six type of game, and then when we have the opportunity to run, we got to take advantage of it. That's Mike Pressler, the head coach of Iowa Wesley, and a very impressive young coach. He's had him in the semis and the finals in the last two years. Very engaging young man. You can see why he does such a good job recruiting. He's got a great personality, and this program has arrived. They haven't won the national championship yet. They've done everything else but. Today's the day for them. Mike Pressler, only 27 years old, and in his third year as a head coach of the battling bishops of Ohio Wesleyan University, and he really has them believing in themselves. He absolutely does, and uh, it's a program that people now recognize across the country, along with Hobart. As we said, this is the big step for him. He'd like to do it today. So would the team. Dave Urich has never been in the position of being an underdog in this game, but he is this time around. And I asked him whether he thought that Ohio Wesleyan has the best chance of any team that Hobart has ever faced in the championship. And they've got the home site. Uh, we're, it's going to take a good team to beat us. Uh, they are a good team. So I think it's a, it's a, great, it's a great matchup. It'll be an interesting uh, game to see how the two styles uh, match up. That is Dave Urich, the head coach of Hobart. Eight years he's coached the team, and eight years he's won the national championship. This is year number nine. Some of the outstanding individuals in the game, both attacks are outstanding for uh, Ohio Wesleyan and for Hobart, but for Ohio Wesleyan, they've got a senior by the name of Rob Alvino, who is the man that uh, has Dave Urich particularly concerned. Well, he's the leading goal getter and assist getter for Ohio Wesleyan. He's the kind of guy, he's got a lot of points, but he's the leader out there. He's the quarterback. So Hobart's really going to have to go after him, shut him down. If they can shut him down defensively, then they should maybe establish their offense and help them get into the kind of game they like to play. There is a difference in the goal scoring between the two teams. Uh, Hobart gets most of their goals from the attack, whereas Ohio Wesleyan balances it out. Their midfielders, certainly they've got some excellent ones in Blanchard and uh, Boucher, are uh, very effective. Absolutely. They're very, very strong there. And Hobart, with uh, with Tom Gravani on the attack, the, the attack, the whole attack for Hobart averages uh, about 200 goals as a unit. So they get a lot of goals, a lot of points, I should say. So the, they're kind of attack-oriented, but Gravani is the guy that that zone defense is going to have to go after. And we got to look at uh, Tom Gravani. He likes to score often from behind the net and work one-on-one. -on -one. And here he is in action. One of the things about Gravani in the zone defense is that he's going to have to be patient, as the whole Hobart team is. It's one of the things that Dave Yurick said they worked on. It always throws them a curveball, but they want to be patient and get their offense going. They like to run, but the tempo would like to be controlled by Ohio Wesleyan. The goalies, Jim Schwartz for Ohio Wesleyan, 6'4", 240 pounds, and for Hobart, a native of Columbus, Ohio, Sean Trell. So those are just some of the names that you'll be hearing as we bring you the Division Three Lacrosse Championship game. in the air at Pizza Hut. New hand-tossed traditional pizza. A pizza that's taking off with a crust that's perfect. Not too thick, not too thin. And reaching new heights with a special blend of mozzarella, cheddar, and Monterey Jack cheeses. New hand-tossed traditional pizza. Landing in a neighborhood near you. Go ahead. Test flight a bite today. Pizza Hut!
Back at Selby Field in Delaware, Ohio, the home team, Ohio Wesleyan, is dressed in their white jerseys, black shorts, red numerals, and red trim. There they are walking to their bench. The ground in front of the respective benches covered by a tarp. It is a very warm day. Humidity high, but the wind is not a factor as the two teams now out near midfield eyeballing one another. Number 33 is James Simington. He's out of England for Hobart, Cheshire, England. And Simington will stay out and be the faceoff man here initially for Hobart. They'll rotate their faceoff men. And in a game like this, Dale, where possession is so critical because one team favors a defensive style, possession means an awful lot. Well, Pressler said they'd like to play kind of a half field game, set it up. Obviously, if you can get the face off, that can help you out. Schweikus is facing off for Ohio Wesling. Wesley, and he kicks the ball back. Schweikus kicks it back into his own end, and we have no control as Flair is dumped immediately. Waldron went down. Procedure is the call, and it'll go over to Ohio Wesleyan. They're going to change here. Somebody, I believe, stepped out of the box over the restraining line, and that gives the ball to Ohio Wesleyan. And here come the battling bishops. They lose the ball on their own end. Tom Gravani picks it up now for Hobart. Gravani leading the transition game, and we'll see if Hobart takes their time and tries to come up with a good shot. On the exchange with Scott Braden, senior out of La Canada, California. Braden holding the ball now. Giving it up to Simington at the top of the box. He'll go to Drury, number nine. This is Kurt Drury out of Peterborough, Ontario. Now Drury sends back to Gravani. Gravani makes his move. He has Braden back behind the cage. Now to Bardwell. Going one against three. He feeds up top to Drury. It's off his stick. Ball may not roll all the way to midfield. It does cross the midfield line, and somebody stepped over will have an offsides violation. And if you're watching lacrosse for the first time, we'll explain it. Well, Ohio Wesleyan's going to get the ball. Dave Urich right there, not too pleased with that. They have been going after the ball, controlled it, but they made a mistake there. Ohio Wesleyan, you saw them drop back in that zone that they're famous for, and they have made famous. And right now, they're going to play the kind of game they want. Six on six, slow it down, run a patterned offense. Ohio Wesleyan with the ball now on offense for the first time. We'll set the players up as the ball is rotated around right now, going counterclockwise. Number 11 is... Toby Boucher, number 10 is Schluter. This is Boucher again, a very quick midfielder. He makes the move against Schmidt. He goes to the left hand for the shot. Trell with a save, and the rebound ricochets into the far corner where Sclafani was in pursuit. Boucher had it last, knocked out of his stick, out of bounds, and it will go over to Hobart. Gary Rinaldi, number 17, over there for Ohio Wesleyan. Freshman out of Juan. Oh, there's Mike Pressler. Doesn't look old enough to be coaching on a cross team, does he? Not a college team. <laughs> no, he was an All-American football player, Division III player, Washington and Lee, a nose guard. Eric was a linebacker and a nose guard at Cortland State, so they got uh, some similar backgrounds. Right now, Hobart's going to attempt to clear. Sean Trell, generally a pretty good clearing goalie. And he hits Simington. a big target. Simington at Whoa. midfield. He takes a double team, gives it up. In quickly is Castro for the ball. He loses it. So does Drury as they hack along the sideline. Drury's lost his stick, and Schluter comes away with it. But he loses it to Bardwell. He rushes through the defense, comes in for a shot, and a save by Schwartz. The rebound not handled by Gravani. They hack away it. Gravani comes up with it again. They feed the crease, and another save against Braden by Jim Schwartz. Two hot saves by Jim Schwartz, and a flag is down. Absolutely, Braden. Took a nice left-handed shot, and he was really one-on-one. -on -one. Schwartz came up with a good save. This goalie is 6'4", 240. I questioned about the speed a little bit. I have not seen him play, but Coach Presser said he's got very, very quick hands, and watch the stick go down. There it is, right there, and he even controls the rebound. Nice job, but Hobart is now a man up. And Bill Miller, the outstanding freshman who recently Set an NCAA record for assists in a playoff game is on. He's number three. Braden feeding it to Miller. Miller feeds a crease for the assist to Tom Gravani. So just as we speak of Miller's prowess in setting up his teammates, he feeds Tom Gravani, and it is one to nothing Hobart. Very pretty. Just a classic man up. Try to get him shifting. 
hit the open man when they shift. And boy, you talk about being open. Gravani right there on the crease. And of course, Schwartz did not have a chance for that. Hobart up 1 0. And Tom Gravani comes up with the goal. For Gravani, his 61st goal of the year. He's got 82 points. Miller, the leading assist man, picks up number 43. Off the faceoff, this time Todd Udemol out to take the face. Hobart wins it again. And they look to go to a uh, controlled attack. They're into the box now. Braden goes behind, and Gravani goes to him. Open on the near side momentarily. Where the ball is Mike DiMaria, number 22. Now to Udemol. And Gravani. DiMaria is in the slot. Matt Kerwick's there now. Here's Braden. Braden goes down on the check. He gives it up to Gravani. This is it off quickly. They'll move that ball quickly against the zone defense. Bardwell to Braden. And Schwartz with a save. Ball will stay in bounds. Udemol's over there quickly. Scooped up again by Hobart. They're beating Ohio Wesley into the ground ball. Real basic lacrosse, man ball. Somebody blocks out the man, and then somebody scoops up the ball. It's something they learned JV lacrosse in high school, but it carries over all the way to the national championship game. Now it's played by Braden. With a change of direction, he goes back to Gravani, the quarterback so far today. Now Bardwell. Bardwell right alongside the crease. Feeds up to Kerwick, and a Schwartz with another save. Ball ricochets out, and looks like Hobart's there again to get the rebound. They do. Braden has it to Gravani. Ohio Wesleyan goes back into that zone. They break up the play. They come away with the ball right now for the takeaway. Schweikers has it, and now it's the fast legs of Boucher. Carrying it into the box, going to the left hand, knocked away from him by behind. He gets it back. His shot is low and wide. Oh, that's going to be Trell. Hobart gets to the ball first, and the man of Sean Trell. Well, Boucher is really took a couple of shots still managed to get a shot off it was a little bit wide and Sean Trell quickly out of the cage got back there as the ball went over and you see the the check they bring the stick up right on there that's Kerwick and then the ball goes down but he gets it back again cocks the left handed shot takes a low one and there you'll see it was wide but what you don't see there is that Trell then went out and got by the end line as the ball went over closest to it. Hobart ball clearing attempt. You talk about having eyes behind your head, in the back of your head. Well, in a sense, Trell did. He knew nobody was back there for Ohio Wesleyan, so he ran to the ball, and the man closest to it as it goes out of bounds on a shot gets possession for his team. Now Gravani with Hobart leading one to nothing. Scott Braden up top to Matt Torgler is in the game. Torgler wears number 47. His brother Dave Torgler is a freshman for Ohio Wesleyan. They both play the midfield. Now Braden. Braden making the move. He sends the double team. He gave it up to Gravani. Working from behind. Gravani going down. He pops up. Looks like a runner going into second base. Now he gives it up to Drury. And they work it quickly behind the net to Braden. He has man coverage back there. Braden starts to move. Draws the double. Gives it up to Drury. Top of the slot. Shot is wide, but you see Hobart closest to it, so they retain possession. Well, Chris Goss and Mike Warrens, 32 and 39, are in front of that man, and they are excellent defenders, and they really play this zone defense, as we said, only giving up 4.5 goals over that 16-game season. It's almost unbelievable. Simington now, as Hobart goes counterclockwise, Torgler sending back to Braden, dishing it off to Bardwell. He'll start his move. You see, they take away the one-on-one -on -one move from behind with his zone defense. Yeah, and they get some help. They, they really do. They slide. They even double team out of the zone. You see right there, they slid, but now they'll just drop back into their zone. It is by no means a passive zone. There's a low shot way wide off the stick of Braden, but it is a shot, not a pass, and by virtue of being closest to it, Hobart retains possession. We're in the first quarter, 9.32 to play. Hobart leads it 1-0 on the goal by Tom Gravani. Drury inbounds it to Bardwell. Now Gravani again. Defense doesn't really come out and challenge him behind the cage. He'll pick him up as they come close to the goal line. Lots of time that forces you to take a real Here's wide the out move. shot. He got by the yes. defense and he scores. Super one-on-one -on -one move by Jim Bardwell. The senior out of Tully, New York, has just picked up his 27th goal of the year. He's got 25 assists as well, and Hobart has jumped to a 2 to nothing lead on Ohio Wesleyan. Just as I was saying that you really forces your outside to take a wide or outside shot, Bardwell penetrates 
and the slide came. They tried to give him some help. They tried to give Schwartz some help, but Bardwell, the senior from Tully, New York, put it by for a two-goal lead. Now we'll have the faceoff with Hobart, winners of the last eight NCAA championships, out to a quick 2-0 lead. Udemula, the faceoff against Schweikers. Ball comes out, pops into midair. Possession belongs to Hobart. Gravani sending it deep down into the corner to Bardwell. Now to Braden. Very deliberate offense by Hobart. Slower than their normal pattern, but this is what you have to do against a defensive team that this, plays an active zone. This is six on six. This is the thing that uh, you have to be patient on. It work. There's the pass to kind of the zone leader. Bardwell to Kerwick. They go up top, then they try to sneak it in the back door. Now Braden to Bardwell. He'll try it again with a one-on-one -on -one move, and he got the shot away. Schwartz out of the net gets decked. Nobody's in the cage. The defenders are allowed to step into that crease, and finally Schwartz gets it back and outlets it now. This game has been played almost entirely in the Ohio Wesleyan end of the field. Here's a pass that is uh, handled by Rob Alvino, touching it for one of the few times so far in the early going. Alvino waits for Boucher to come on. Now he gives it to him. He's got a step on Frank Fediaka, number 11. Ohio Hobart Wesleyan, generally runs it man to man. Ohio Wesleyan not able to get into any kind of set offensive pattern as of yet. When you look at the shots, they've taken two, and Hobart has taken nine at this point, so you can tell that the game, as you said, Dave, has been played mostly in Ohio Wesleyan's half of the field. Neil Ringers Four gives pass. it up. Four pass in the corner intended for Sclafani, and really an unforced error gives the ball back to Hobart. Ringers, a freshman out of Connecticut, just made a poor pass, and as you said, an unforced error, not the kind of thing you want to do. You know, in talking to the coaches, they both expected a low-scoring game. Hobart's got two goals fairly quickly, I would say. They've got to be pleased with this. If they go to a game 6-5 like they did before, you'd have to believe that the team that gets out and establishes the momentum might be in the driver's seat. Sean Trell out of Columbus, Ohio. Starting goalie for Hobart. Speaking of low-scoring games, the most goals allowed all year in the game was nine. And that was in a win by Ohio Wesleyan. Instantly, they got the clear up to Castro. That's the second time they ran it up the wing, the right side wing, and they had no problem clearing the ball, and Simington's going to get it down to the attack. Simington puts it in the stick of Braden. Braden sends behind to Gravani, goes to the right hand. Gravani feeding off to Bardwell. He'll try that one-on-one -on -one move again, take as much of it as they'll give him. Now Braden. Worked the ball well, Drury, and Bardwell. He tries to go one-on-one, -on -one, got Good the shot. shot away. Tough angle, it's still Hobart ball. By the way, our officials today, the referee is Bruce Crawford, the umpire is Gary Fallon, field judge is Tom Young, and the chief bench official is Ron Reback. Talked about the Hobart attack, the top three scorers on their team are all the attack men, Gravani, Miller, and Bardwell. Miller are also an assist man. They have a combined for 206 points. Very impressive, and they've been carrying the game right now to Ohio Wesleyan. Cordler oh, ladders and scores. Matt Cordler from just inside the top of the box with a high hard one beating Jim Schwartz, and it is now Hobart three, Ohio Wesleyan nothing. Here it is again. Well, Torgler is open. You can see him slide. Students coming to Hobart and William Smith Colleges will learn many things in their four years here. But one of the first things they all learn is that we're in a part of the country that's famous for its stunning natural environment. exceptional setting doesn't make a college great, of course. But it's a wonderful place to start. It 
is a surprising start here at Selby Field in Delaware, Ohio. The Hobart Statesmen have jumped to a three to nothing lead by dominating the offensive action. And if you're going to, we said, if you're going to talk about a low scoring game and you've got three already with 637 left in the first quarter, then that might go out the window or you might see the Ohio Wesleyan team settle down after that timeout. And it is Hobart coming away with the ball again after the faceoff. Cosgrove up with a big stick if they lose it. At least momentarily. And now it is finally taken down by Alvino. He's forced to give up the ball to her to Schweikers who can't play it off the natural grass field. Cleanly is back into his own end of the field. And Hobart's going to come away with it. Gravani. Hobart looks to transition. Now they're really hustling on the ground balls, Dave, and they've really picked up some key ones, and that one was a key one. Shut off the opportunity for Ohio Wesleyan and sets their offense up. Not the transition game now. Settle down six on six. Terry Mulherin is on for Hobart. He did not see action earlier this year. One of the newer names, Bill Miller, the freshman. Up in the slot. Here's a score. A high pass. It was pulled down by Matt Kerwick. And in coming down from reaching up for the pass, he decided to shoot. And he has beaten Jim Schwartz for the fourth goal by Hobart in this first quarter. There's the pass. They're really letting him penetrate and get the shot off. You see right there, the ball was down and not able to get it. Schwartz not able to get down there in time. And that's 4 nothing now as Kerwick picks up his first goal, a sophomore out of Rochester. And only his third goal of the year, 4 to nothing. Hobart leading and shocking Ohio Wesleyan. Hobart with another new faceoff man in there this time with Jacques Monti. And this time, Boucher overruns the ball twice, loses it. Hobart gets it back, and Cosgrove with a big stick redirects it to Sean Trell, his goalie. Now Hobart with a four-goal lead. Well, they can't afford to sit on it as Arvin Tidies, the defenseman, gives it up. It certainly takes some of the pressure off of them. They can afford to take a couple of more chances offensively. Now Bardwell with Miller. What it also may do is force Ohio Wesleyan out of his own defense. It's like a basketball team that falls behind. Sometimes you've got to go after the ball and you just can't sit back. That's where they're getting right there some matchups, some one on one stuff that they're getting. And when you get beat, the slides don't seem to be there. There's the, there's the move, the attempt anyway. Nice push out, maybe a push in general. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Bardwell ended up in the crease. That's the circle around the cage. He was pushed in there legally. And so the ball goes back over Matt Araneo on the defensive work for Ohio Wesley. And Dave Urich has got to be somewhat relieved. He said his team was a little bit tight when we spoke to him at breakfast time. He said a little tight, maybe a little tired. But uh, they've obviously been there before, as has Ohio Wesleyan. Hobart, by the way, has bought, brought a representative uh, contingent here. School year is still in session for Hobart. It is over for Ohio Wesleyan. And the battling bishops, each member of the team, got on the phone and they contacted all 1,400 members of the student body and many of the alumni to try to get them to come back this weekend. They opened up the dorms at only $8 a night, gave them a free buffet, and many of them have indeed come back. But Obviously, they don't like what they're seeing now. They throw the ball deep into the Hobart end, but it's taken away by the statesman who lead it four to nothing. They tried to get some Scalafani, but uh, it wasn't there. It was a long pass. They let the goalie go all the way up. Schwartz go up. He tried to surprise him with a long pass. Hobart picked it off. And now the ball is back into the box on the other end. I'd say about 95% of the action in this game has been at this end of the field. Bill Miller working behind with Gravani. Feed it to Bardwell. Bardwell back to Gravani. Now to Miller. Doesn't have the angle for the shot. Not yet. There's the double team. They take it away. What an effort that was. The ball bounced in the air. Matt Hogler pulled it down. And with a 360 move, he beats the goalie, Jim Schwartz. A sensational effort by Matt Torgler. Torgler picks up his second goal. Let's see if we can pick it up. There's the, there's the movement by Miller. Ball down. Schwartz doesn't get it. I thought he had it. He just jumps up in the air. Torgler just went over his shoulder, and Schwartz out of position, not able to stop it. And Torgler up with the fifth goal for Hobart, his second of the day. 
How do you figure this? Here's a man who scored two goals all season long, and in the first quarter of the championship game, Matt Togler has got two goals. Well, I'll bet the parents are here. Yeah. With Matt and Dave playing. And right now, Torgler is the story of this game. Oh, the Hobart dominates yet another faceoff. They take it away with Mike DiMaria. Number 22 giving it to Udemul. And now it's Braden. It is five to nothing. Hobart leading. Ball on the ground. Hobart That's losing with. it. And Ohio Wesleyan trying to come out of their own end. And they are forced into giving up the ball at the back line. Good hustle by Hobart. They just are all over. They're dominating the action. Goss is an excellent defenseman. But again, I, they seem to be a little tight. They lose the ball, give Hobart the opportunity. Incidentally, when you look at faceoffs, it's five to one in favor of Hobart. That's an important statistic because they now are controlling the game and taking advantage of the six on six. Miller faking one way, feeding up top to Kerwick. He fires. He would have had Schwartz beat. He was lunging for that ball. Now Di Maria, 22, got Kerwick open. He's going to loop it underhanded to Gravani. Miller, Braden wants it on the near side. Instead, Miller controls it. Miller works around the crease. Now to Gravani. Gravani back to Miller. And Braden finally does touch it. He gives it up quickly to Kerwick. Just running that zone. They just. Trying to keep push them out. Now they've gotten beat right here. A couple back door plays one on one. Not to be that time. Braden sneaking in. Tried to feed the slot. Stolen away by Ohio Wesleyan. And their fans come to life as the battling Bishops carrying it into the attacking zone. And they put it on the stick of Rinaldi. That was Schluter that got it down there. Gary Rinaldi. Giving it up now to Boucher. Boucher going right, looking to get a shot away. Instead, he has to give it up. And they rotate it to Rinaldi. Man at oh. the crease, and Trell with a great stop. Ricocheting back to Rinaldi. Ringers. And here's a shot to score, the first by the battling Bishops. It is Boucher who gets the goal. A little pushing and shoving involving Will Schmidt of Hobart after that goal by Boucher. Well, I think it was just a matter of time until they got two All-American midfielders, till they got him into the game and they get him in here. They really controlled the action. The ball was down and just a super left-handed shot. And there's the push and shove. We thought, but Toby Boucher, the senior out of Bristol, Rhode Island, gets the first goal. And more importantly, I think that's the wake-up call for Ohio Wesleyan's offense. But of course, right here, it's very important the faceoff very important because it has been dominated at this point by that man and Simington. It is Simington who wins it again he carries it in he feeds the crease and oh. Miller answers back seconds after the initial goal by Ohio Wesleyan Simington did it all and he set up little Bill Miller and it is six to one Hobart two goals in nine seconds well we talk about face off and momentum Simington they, Ohio Wesleyan's all excited they lose the faceoff. Simington sprints down. They leave somebody open on the crease. And little Miller, Billy Miller, the freshman out of Philadelphia, gets the sixth goal now for the Hobart Statesman. And more importantly, I think, took a little bit of the momentum away from Ohio Wesleyan. Hey, just as you were talking about establishing momentum, Hobart took it right away. And Hobart's going to get to this ground ball again. It's Matt Torgler. Orgler feeding it down to Bardwell. They may catch him in transition. Miller holds it. Miller feeds up top. Orgler is going to slow it down now. Simington goes right and Drury left. This time Braden goes into the slot. Miller and Gravani work from behind. Miller. Outside now to Drury. Simington. Hobart very unpredictable offensively. It was a bad pass, but Drury gets there on the bounce. The defensive Miller. middies being quite aggressive, chasing, putting pressure on Schluter Miller especially. Ooh. Miller, Miller with a good feed to Braden, and now Braden struck in for that. 
will be some concern, I'm sure, for Mike Pressler. Wesley had been letting him feed the crease a little bit. There's the ground ball stat important because that shows, at least in this game, the domination. But I was just going to say they tried to feed the ball into the crease, and boy, you hear some aluminum smacking in some fiberglass getting hit. They are getting a lot tougher in there when well, Hobart tries to get that ball across the zone. And Hobart will now put on somewhat of a ride. Last time it was successful. We're into the final minute. Final 20 seconds, actually, the first quarter that has been thoroughly dominated by Hobart, 6-1. to one. They've had some problems clearing. Wesleyan's clearing. We've got them a 3 of 8 on clears, so you want to get up around 50%. Now with only six seconds to go, offsides is called. Offsides will give the ball over to Hobart. Sometimes they'll take a timeout in a situation like this. If they have possession, five seconds to go. I don't think they'll waste one now with a 6-1 to one lead. And let's see, they have plenty of time to score. Yes, they do. Udamu will start from that burned out spot on the field, a, a prank by one of the Ohio Wesleyan rivals. Udamu feeds it down. They'll get the shot away and a save by Schwartz. And he goes up high to pull down a dangerous rebound. And so we've come to the end of the first quarter here in Delaware, Ohio, with a score, Hobart 6 and Ohio Wesleyan 1. Sometimes I feel that way, but I won't make the mistake of believing that alcohol and other drugs won't hurt me. They will, the same way they've hurt many other people. All I have to do is read a newspaper or watch television for proof. I'm smart enough to learn from other people's mistakes. This message furnished by the NCAA. We'll be at the Schaefer's, okay? Remember, no parties. Sure, Dad. I can't believe they went home. Great. Just great. Just underway in the second quarter with Hobart leading by a score of 6-1. to one. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypoultry. This is the NCAA Division III National Lacrosse Championship. Hobart College has won it all eight years. It's been contested. This is year number nine, and Ohio Wesleyan came in as the favorite. But they're back in the accustomed underdog role off the backhand shot. Ohio Wesleyan will retain possession. This is the most sustained attack of the game by the battling bishops. Charlie Blanchard had that last shot. One of the few times we've actually mentioned his name in this game. Alvino back behind. They feed the crease. Oh. Belcher gets his second goal of the game. He's probably the most dangerous weapon on the Ohio Wesleyan team. And he got into a precarious position for the Hobart defense, and he cashed in in a big hurry. Watch Will Schmidt, 45, for Hobart, because he slid over and just overplayed or was a little bit out of position, and very difficult to do that with that man. Toby Boucher gets his second goal, and Ohio Wesleyan's second goal. And now we go up to the faceoff circle again, where Ohio Wesleyan has not been that successful up till this point. Hobart has used three different face-off men. Right now it's Jacques Monti in there. And Simington pops the ball into his own stick. He's a big man, powerful, and tough to stop. 6-3, you're right. Simington throwing it downfield. Now Monti feeding over the head of Bardwell out of bounds, and Hobart turns it over. Maybe a break there. You're right, it was a poor pass. Very, very high. Bardwell couldn't get it. So sometimes it's not all the face-offs you get. It's what you do with them after you get it. And that one was a blown opportunity for Hobart, but it's up to eight to two now in faceoffs favor of the Statesman. And Hobart gonna play a little defense now as Boucher 
gets it back into the goalie. They redirect it to their goalie, Jim Schwartz. A common tactic in lacrosse. Allow the goalie to help the team come upfield. And Hobart will apply pressure as Bardwell takes a run of the goalie, who is fair game when he's out of his crease. Bardwell in pursuit of Schwartz, who gives it up on the near sideline, just pulled down by Warrens. The defenseman throws up field too far, intercepted by Arvin Tides. And Hobart transitioning now. Momentarily, they had a three on two. Here's Bardwell, and his shot is deflected high and wide. And Hobart will keep it. Good defensive work in close. Goss made him pay for that, too, after he got down there. Bardwell really took a shot from 39, Goss. And I would say that the Ohio Wesleyan team is toughening up defensively. And that man right there, nice check as the transition fast break taken away. Hobart back with the ball again, and Ravani giving it up to Drury. If Hobart is doing one thing differently today, they are not holding on to the ball as individuals. Yeah, you can't really do that. Passing it quickly. And one thing that I think Ohio Wesleyan is doing, Dave, is they've moved that zone out a little bit. They are picking people up a little farther out and not letting Hobart penetrate like they did in the first quarter. Ravani drew the double, gave it up. Hobart passing the ball quickly, looking for their spots like that by Drury. He had the opportunity, and it was just high, about a half a foot over the top of the crossbar. By bringing that zone out, they hope to make those shots go a little bit farther out. And, however, Hobart controlling the possession aspect. Miller's going to bring it in from behind. 12 minutes Warren's to go in him. this first half. Miller had it nice checked away from him. Nice by Warrens. And Warrens gets the ball now. Hobart will continue to apply pressure. Schwartz at midfield gets it up ahead to Goss. Goss carries it over, sends back to Blanchard to get the step of Fediaka. Now the move around Will Schmidt by Blanchard, carrying it all the way in over the top. No flag, the shot is wide, but it'll be kept by Ohio Wesley. Mike Sheehan out to give a blow there for Hobart, but Charlie Blanchard took it down, got the shot off, and now possession remains with Ohio Wesley. Defenseman Eric Stein checks in the game for the first time. Hobart very successful at clearing the ball in this game. Ohio Wesleyan only four of ten. Stein is a junior out of uh, Amherst, New York in the Buffalo area. Here's the move. The defender and the offensive man go down. The ball is intercepted and taken away by Mike Sheehan. Upfield. Marvin Tidy is dribbling it a couple of times. Now he gets it to Braden. Hobart is leading six to one and they're back on the attack. Miller. Miller feeds Gravani. Oh. And he just found the open space atop the stick of Jim Schwartz. And Tom Gravani gets his second goal of the game. It is now 7-2 Hobart. I think they caught everybody changing, and Gravani just watch how deep he gets after uh, Miller passes the ball back and will pick him up. There's Gravani. Yeah, you see the distance between he and the closest defender, and it gives him a chance to really crank up, and he went high on Schwartz. Schwartz unable to react, and his second goal, seventh for Hobart, gives them a big lead. It is a 7-2 margin now for Hobart. On the faceoff now, Symington is back out there. Oh. This time, Symington with Kevin Waldron. Waldron right after him. Waldron family on hand to watch this game here in Delaware, Ohio. As Arvin Tides comes out of the scrum, there's a whistle. We've had a game that's been remarkably penalty free. Very few well, man up situations. Just as you mentioned that, we're going to get a slash call. So, Ohio Wesleyan is going to be man down for a minute. Hobart's second opportunity for man up. They're one of, well, they're one of one now. We'll see what they do on this one. So, Hobart has the ball with the extra attacker or midfielder. In any event, they have one more man in the offensive end of the field than Ohio Wesleyan has defensively. And they'll take their time, try to draw a jump, and then try to beat the ball across like they hit, tried to hit Gravanti, but a nice slide by Ohio Wesleyan, Kim Hall. Come on, now, let's go. And really, on a man-up situation or the equivalent of a power play against a team that plays a zone, it's not too much different than what you try to do offensively the rest of the time. Move the ball quickly and spot the open man. I said Hall. I should have said Waldron on that as he slid over, and that will give the ball to 
Wesleyan. Boucher behind his own cage. They're going to ride against him, and so Schwartz cheaps it out of there, but Ooh. it's intercepted. Intercepted by Hobart. Quickly, they transition to offense. Remember, they still have the man advantage. That, as I say, it didn't hurt him there. just got it up. I thought they might have a fast break. But Drury is coming on the field. Nobody picked up Drury as he was coming on, but we've got a timeout called, I believe, by Hobart. Come out with a score. Hobart 7, Ohio Wesleyan 2. Why did you come to Ohio Wesleyan? They're small, but they don't think small. There's an excellent student-teacher ratio. I think the liberal arts make sense. The university is outstanding in the arts. Uh, Wesleyan, I think that there's great opportunities in sports. You make friends here, both kids and teachers. They emphasize not just our careers, but how we can help the world. There are 1,800 reasons to seek your future at Ohio Wesleyan. To find your reason, call or write Ohio Wesleyan University, Delaware, Ohio, 43015. Hobart 7 and Ohio Wesleyan 2. And we've got over 10 minutes to play in this first half. Ohio Wesleyan is looking to join the select few who have won two men's teams championships in the same academic year. Ohio Wesleyan won the Division Three National Basketball Championship. And a lacrosse win today would put them in the exclusive company of Ashland, which won cross-country and outdoor track in the same year. Cal State Stanislaus, baseball and golf. Frostburg State, indoor and outdoor track. Ithaca, football and baseball. Occidental, cross-country and outdoor track. And St. Thomas, cross-country and indoor track. Very fine men's and women's intercollegiate sports program. 22 teams. In all at Ohio Wesley, including a co ed sailing team. Sounds appealing on yeah. a day like today. Ball pops out of the box. Bardwell is there to pull it down or make a drury. He feeds Gravani. Spot where he scored from last time. He's there again. They take a jump at him. Here's the shot to score. As he bounces it by Jim Schwartz, his third goal of the game, Tom Gravani. And it is 8 to 2, Hobart. Well, they were just even as this transpired. He beat Waldron right there and took the shot. You know, now that is that's tough to stop. But see, that's the thing Schwartz is going to have to. He's going to have to make a spectacular stop to pick those guys up and say we can shut these guys off. Gravani is really kind of having his way with them down there. I was wondering too, Dale, whether uh, how Wesley had changed things up defensively. There seemed to be more movement. Maybe it was a result of the offensive man trying to penetrate against the zone. Nevertheless. Hobart wins yet another faceoff. Udemol gets it to Gravani. Gravani. A nice feed back to Udemol. He's got Kerwick ahead of him. Kerwick gives it up behind. Disdaining the shot, he gave it to Miller. Miller, the master feeder to Braden. His shot is wide. Hobart's going to keep. They've been able to get the ball behind and then feed it or try that backdoor move. Didn't go there, but possession retained by Hobart. And as you said, Dave, if they kept a time of possession, which they don't in lacrosse, it would have to be domination city for Hobart at this point in terms of time of possession. It's got to be at least 80 percent. Simington has it now. Drury down to Gravani. Behind he goes to Miller. Miller did not start but seeing more and more playing time. Gravani ducks in ducks out. Now here's Miller. They're still in that zone very definitely. And it's intercepted on the pass intended for Drury, but Drury's there to get it back. Just picked that one right off the ground. Superior stick skills exhibited on ground balls in this game by Hobart. Ian Smith knocked the ball down, but he couldn't get it. Hobart, as you said, up with another ground ball, and they are moving the ball well and spreading themselves out at this point a little bit. Ravani had operating room as he came even with a cage. Gets it again. Now gives it off to Braden. Braden. Crossfield to Simington. Look how quickly Hobart is moving that ball. Well, you can hear them say, keep moving it. The kids on the sideline are saying, keep moving it. That's the way you have to do it. You can't sit around and hold it. You got to move it. 
Savani looking for somebody to pass, dish it off to. Because in the zone, if you can pass faster than they can move and get them going in the wrong direction, that's to your advantage, obviously. They kind of spread things out. Now they got Simington on the crease moving back and forth. 6-3 is a big target. Gravani open to the near side. They go up top to Torgler. He spots Gravani. Gravani back behind. The Miller feeds the far side to Braden. Braden keeps it alive. He lost the ball. Torgler got over with a big check. And the ball goes out of bounds. And Torgler is going to keep it in Hobart's possession. He just dumped Steve Schluter. Schluter. Schluter's brother, Phil Schluter, plays at Syracuse, and I wonder if the Schluter family is trying for the Daily Double on this weekend. That's right. Mike Presser told me that Schluter, excellent defensive mini. The defense has had their problems, only giving up 4.5 during the year. It's seven at this point. Now Simington and Drury. This domination is just remarkable by Hobart in terms of time of possession. Now they're taking the time now. I mean, they've got time on their side. They're going to take the good shot. There's Drury the got right the there. pass from Braden. Boy, Braden really threaded the needle, or maybe it was Miller who did. And Hobart is just passing the ball very, very well against this zone defense. And of course, when the ball goes behind, they don't often have anybody back there. Ohio Wesleyan doesn't from the zone, so Hobart's got something to back up all the time. Seven minutes to go in this first half. Jim Bardwell makes the move, spins, he's picked up, deals it off to Torgler, whips it to Drury. Drury gets the step, and they kick the ball away from him from behind, but it's down on the ground, and Hobart's been winning these ground balls. This time it goes over to Ohio Wesleyan. Well, good hustle by Chris or Ken Knapp. A defensive mini for Ohio Wesley in 27. And then the ball was down. Hobart not up with it as it went out of bounds. Kurt Drury, number nine, was there, but it was off of a Hobart stick, and Ohio Wesley will have to clear. They have not had a lot of luck clearing. Four out of 11. So that's the kind of thing that uh, shows you the kind of defense that Hobart is playing, is they're going right after Schwartz, too. They can afford to take a couple of chances now. Alvino, and how seldom have we mentioned his name in the game? Alvino has it, but he's certainly not in scoring position as he goes by Torgler. Crosses the midfield strike. Looking to give it up, and he does. To Hannon. Dan Hannon, 5'11", 205 pounder from Lovatown, Division High School. Boucher has got both of the goals. The crowd coming to life. Trying to get Ohio Wesleyan back in this game. Winners of 14 in a row. Rinaldi making the move, but he's played tightly by the defense. They double team the ball. Now Blanchard starts. Spin. Oh, shoots nice move. Wide, but it'll be kept by Ohio Wesleyan as Hannon was back there. Good backup. That was a nice move. They've got to get some more shots off on Troll. They've got to test him. They've only got 10 up until this point. 22 for Hobart. Better than two to one shot advantage for the statesman, and you can't score unless you get the shots off, obviously. And they're going to try to work on that. They have gotten better this quarter. Alvino is going to bring it in. He's guarded by Arvin Titus. He feeds the crease right away. Ball down. Trell save. Hannon got the pass. He shot from behind the screen, but as he came free, Trell was able to eyeball him all the way. Di Maria goes up high to pull it down. Di Maria to Bardwell. He's going to be hit from behind. Good defensive work. Waldron. Oh, nice defensive work by Gravanti. And Hobart will take it back. Turnabout is fair play. Knocked it out of Dempsey's stick. I was just going to say Waldron did a good job. They hung the stick, and then right then, Dempsey turned around and hung his stick, and Gravanti knocked it out off the stick of Y. Westland. Matt Kerwick now over to Todd Udamu. Hobart leading it by a score of eight to two. Gravanti sending it back outside to Di Maria. Now Miller. The defensive play there. Not Schluter. away from Udemu by Schluter. The defensive midi with a big stick. Giving it up in the midfield area. Ball was down on the ground. Not seen by the closest Hobart player. Now the battling bishops take it back. 
That's Schluter once again. He's looking for somebody to give them, get rid of that big stick. He gives it to Boucher. No better man to give it to than Boucher. Feeds it back to Hannon. The pass a little bit behind him. And he goes down. We'll see if that wasn't a push. It will stay. Ohio Wesleyan, they get a break. You're right, Dave. The pass was just behind him. They had a break and a chance to go one on one with Trell, but the pass was just a bit behind him. But it makes no difference as they're now beginning to get the offense, I believe, on track. Ohio Wesleyan. It has cooled off somewhat here in Delaware, Ohio. The clouds obscuring the sun. Earlier on, I thought Dave Urich substituted more freely than he has in most games this year early in the contest. Blanchard makes the move. He likes to go to his left. He loops it over the head of the intended man and out of bounds. It's a poor pass. Intended there for Sclafani. And that is a costly loss of possession by Ohio Wesley. Yes, you're right. It is loss of possession when, as you said, if it's unforced, that was just a poor one-handed pass. It didn't get there. Especially when you're having problems offensively you want to take advantage of every chance you can get hopefully you can get some momentum but right now it's going to be Hobart attempting to clear again Ravani has three goals one clear Torgler is two Bardwell Kerwick Miller they score the other goals for Hobart it is eight to two we're down to four minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half Simington lost the ball and we had a whistle in the vicinity an offsides call Hobart was offside it appeared that they uh, Castro Chip Castro was not where he should be and offsides called against the statesman but they're going to have to clear it Ohio Weston and now Toby Boucher is going to get the ball they are going to go all over him Schwartz up to help him out Schwartz at the midfield line gets it to Goss the defenseman nearly a poor pass there it's taken down and Ringers has it now. Number 25, Neil Ringers. Out of Bridgefield, Connecticut. Boucher, who has the two goals for Ohio Wesleyan. Hobart out shooting Ohio Wesleyan by a two-to-one count. Here's Alvino working in close. Sheehan is there watching him. Alvino back up top to Boucher. Two years ago, they were in the semifinals. Last year, they were in the championship game. This year, they're back in the championship game, but anything short of a win will be disappointing for Ohio Wesley. Boucher digging for it on the ground. It's still there. And as Hobart came out of there with the ball, the player was decked. Virtual was decked. But the call goes against the statesman. So the ball back to Ohio Wesleyan. They send Arvin Tidies in. They get the big stick in. Send him down to pick up Rob Alvino. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go. Alvino's been kept off the scoreboard to this point. Arvin Tidies is on him, defending. Another pass not handled. This time Boucher had to go off his stick. He hustles back, but he knocks it to Torgler. Now here's a transition break. Gravani coming in one on one. He scores. Tom Gravani with his fourth goal. And credit the hustle of Hobart picking that loose ball off the ground at midfield. And Gravani makes it a 9 to 2 game. Now this ball was down on the ground. And when Hobart picked it up, they just dished it up ahead to Gravani. And as you said, Schwartz one on one. And look, see, Schwartz started to step down, and that's when Gravani unleashed it high. And we got 36 square feet to defend. Usually, you're you're going to lose, and that's exactly what happened there to Schwartz. Schwartz went low to his right, and Gravani went high to the left. The and advantage always to the offensive man in that situation. As big as Schwartz is at 6'4", 240, still a lot of room to shoot for. And again, the faceoff won by Hobart. This is Udemol. The nine goals scored by Hobart in this first half. Equals the most given up by Ohio Wesleyan in an entire game this year. And both coaches said they expected a low-scoring game. What did you say Hobart averages? About 17 a game? 16. They can hit double figures in the first half. They've got two and a half minutes to go. Bardwell dealing it. 
Up top of the box, there's another ground ball. Udemol goes down. Ball pops into the stick of Arvin Tidies. So they're good and they're lucky. Well, that's, that's a great combination. Bardwell behind to Gravani. They feed the crease. Ball knocked away. It's still going to be in possession of Hobart. Ian Smith checks into the game defensively. So does Togler, Simington, and Drury. You can see him get in position right there. That's Bardwell and Goss from Ohio Wesleyan on the crease. And you don't want to give up position there. So Goss is going to put a little aluminum into him. Gravani is all three of Hobart's goals here in the second quarter. And he has one in the first. First goal of the game, as a matter of fact. He's got four goals. And the ball is kicked to the far sideline, but kept in bounds by Simington. Bounce feed to Drury. And Miller, and a ground ball, he scores. He threaded the needle between Warren's and Schwartz, and it's double figures for Hobart here in the first half, as they now lead it by a score of 10 to 2 on the goal by Bill Miller, his second of the game. Well, Miller just scoots in between two guys and puts it right between the leg of Schwartz. They really tried to collapse on him, but I'll tell you, Hobart is just playing excellent lacrosse, and Miller, who oftentimes is an assist man, comes up with his second goal. Dale, you've got to go back 31 games for the last time a team scored. As many goals against Ohio Wesleyan. It was Washington and Lee in the third game of 1987. They had 12. Frank Fediaka, number 11. Hobart controlling it again with Scott Braden. And a minute and 20 to go in this first half. That has been thoroughly, thoroughly Hobart's game. In this Joe quarter, they've gotten five faceoffs to one for Ohio Wesleyan. And, and in the game, it's at 12 to 2. So that is definitely a factor. Fall down. Miller's going to have room to run it down. It doesn't roll out of bounds with the natural grass field. Both teams used to playing on the turf. Field's in great shape, very fast. I was down there very hard. <laughs> Not sloppy at all. Nice patch in front of each goalie, too. <laughs> and you get a look at it. Schwartz standing on the round patch there, so should get a pretty predictable bounce. Up top, taken down. They feed the crease back. Tremendous ball movement. Kerwick and Schwartz for the save. Good save by Schwartz. Good outlet by Schwartz. Schwartz has made some fine saves. And will we have an offside? Time we out. get a timeout taken with 25 seconds to play here in the first half. Ohio Wesleyan has the ball, and in that huddle, Mike Pressler will have to try to come up with something to concoct a good. Last second shot in this first half and see if they can send Ohio Wesley into the locker room with a happy thought. Well, you're right. Not only a happy thought, but maybe a little confidence. Seven goals if they go in at 10-3 is not out of the question. But let's look at the save made by, by Schwartz as they Bardwell passes out. Watch the watch it go down. There it is, right there. But impressively, he came up with that and then just threaded the needle to Schluter. They got it into the offensive half where they could call a timeout. And they're going to try to get that one last goal, perhaps in 25 seconds, to give them some momentum. Dave, you know, it does seem like a lot of goals, but you and I have seen them scored in bunches. Oh. Well, this is the first time, of course, that Ohio Wesleyan has played host to an NCAA Division III lacrosse championship. Where they have hosted other NCAA championships, 1978 tennis, 1984 men's and women's cross country, 1987 golf. In many sports, you hear about a team out hustling another. In lacrosse, they really have an indication. It's called the ground ball stat. And Hobart has really they've been the vacuum cleaners today. Also got 25 shots off to 11 so far in this in the first half almost over so they have dominated in that category also here we go with 20 seconds to go Blanchard to Alvino and this is the way the game is gone you're absolutely right if you had to encapsulate what's happened to Ohio Wesley and that was it right there they have been making some bad passes not to see a Hobart hasn't been playing good lacrosse but I don't think Mike Pressler has got to be saying look guys we got to get back to basics we got to pass and catch 
don't make those mistakes. Hobart's too good to do that with. And obviously with that score, that gives you an idea of what problems they have had. And Trell not really been tested. They've only taken 11 shots at him. Not all of them of the quality variety. Final seconds. Oh. <laughs> he really got crushed. Miller came out, and then Schwartz laid 240 pounds on him. Two seconds to play in this first half. Drury will have time to throw it in. Let's see, will he try something like an alley-oop? Toss it in front? The gentleman just screen, and, and, and then they'll jump up in the air if he's going to shot on goal. Let's see what he does. He fires it into a crowd. They score! And they wipe oh. out the goal. They wipe oh. out the goal as Bardwell got the bounce pass, and he got it past Schwartz, but they say no goal. What a scream they did on him. The great Emily, the favorite. Schweikas will face off against James Simington. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drive Pulcher. Underway third quarter. The faceoffs dominated early by Hobart. And the Statesmen come away with this one momentarily, but it dribbles back toward the goal. Sandwich job there on one of the Ohio Wesleyan players. And it is the battling bishops who come out with the ball. Down by 10 to 2. Charlie Blanchard with it, number 19. Blanchard moving on Torgler. Ringers is in front. Here's the move being made by Rinaldi against Sheehan. He gives it up to Boucher as both of the Ohio Wesleyan goals. Torgler leans on him. Boucher gets the shot away. Save made by Sean Trell. And Trell loops it on the outlet over the head of Arvin Tides, but kept inbounds by Gravani right at the pylon. You know, someone said to, at halftime that not only was Hobart good, that they were lucky. They were lucky there, too, to come up with that ground ball as Gravani did a tightrope act. Gravani now behind us, Scott Braden. One minute into the third quarter. Arneo is guarding him, number 38. Outside he goes to Symington. And now Drury has it. On the far side, it's Bardwell making the move. Bardwell over the top. No call. Now the delayed flag. That should go against Ohio Wesleyan. 30 is seconds. A hold, which means that having had possession, Hobart will now enjoy an extra man. Defensively, they have gone with the zone. We talked to Mike Preston before the game, Dave, and he said, we're not going to change what we do best. And they have been true to form, having a little less success with it in this game than they have during the season. Now they work the ball around. Udamul to Braden. They've had only about three extra man opportunities. Drury fanned on the shot, tried to get the rebound, and the battling bishops are really doing that now, scrapping more in their defensive half of the field. Uh, I was going to say, it's another one of those things where the ball, the ball bounced, and it went off of a Ohio Wesleyan player, Stefani, and now Hobart gets it back again. Drury going to bring it in, I believe, on the far side. Yep. Hobart still with the Man advantage. This is the third such opportunity of the game. Now the teams are at equal strength. Miller intercepted by Schwartz. He's Miller in there almost four. Boy, he just got that out. And a long, lofting pass downfield, and Trell retreats. He has it knocked away. It's open, but picked up by Udemul with that yellow basket on his stick. Into the crease to Trell, and Hobart gets out of harm's way. Here comes Drury up the sideline. Certainly hasn't lost any speed with that knee brace. Drury racing through the crease, didn't get the return key. Now they slow it down. Bardwell and Gravanti outside the Torgler. Schluter over Schluter for Wesleyan. Scoops it up with that big yep. stick. He dumps it back nice behind pass. him to Rinaldi. Rinaldi has to step on Sheehan. He's going wide, and he'll slow it down. Blanchard comes on, so does Boucher. And Ringers, a new midfield in now for Ohio Wesleyan. It is Blanchard with the move. He likes to go to his left. He does. He got the pipe. pipe. And the rebound kicks out to the sideline. Who's closest to it? Oh, well, it stays in. Nice man ball. Dumps away and then with they it. Dump it off. Hobart in transition now. They've got a big stick carrying it in. 
He gives it up to Bardwell. Bardwell feeds the crease. Weak side. Score. Ramonti gets his fifth goal of the game. The transition game. And it is now 11 to 2 Hobart. Ramonti. He's what a style he's got as he gets the ball on a feed from Braden and he just takes a hop step and we have seen this all day they have really let him get in there and penetrate and boy Schwartz just cannot I mean that's not his fault let's put it that way no matter for Ohio Wesleyan because Gravani with five goals has just been on him all day and there was nothing that Schwartz could do about it Gravani earlier tied an NCAA record with seven goals in a playoff game. Hobart has it again. Di Maria. Michael Di Maria gives it up to Gravanti. What a career this man has had, Tom Gravanti. He played at one of the legendary lacrosse powers in the high school ranks, West Genesee High School in Syracuse. And I think he was on a team that lost the state championship in four years. Now he's looking for his fourth collegiate title. Bardwell, he scored inside earlier in a move like this. He may have stepped in the crease. He's dumped in after his efforts anyway. Goss puts him down. They, they doubled him. They, they slid and really collapsed on him. And I think he was in the crease. But Schwartz has not really caught much of a break today in the, in the cage. Shots at this point for Hobart, 28 shots to 13. Better than two to one margin for the statesman. Now, Ohio Wesley with the ball, walk, walking it up slowly. Warns gets it to Boucher. They'll double on him. Schmidt and company, they took it away once. They get it back. Alvino can't handle it. Alvino goes down. They have had pops in the clear. air, taken down by Di Maria. He's got players on both wings. Threw it a little bit beyond the reach of Gravanti. Alvino having an off game, no doubt about it for him. You know, one of the things that has happened, we look at the statistics, clears. They have really had problems clearing the ball against Hobart, and that time. Is a good example of what happened. They got the ball out, lost a ground ball. Bardwell goes down and pops right back up. Well, we said they have not only been playing excellent lacrosse, they've been very fortunate. Ball down again. That time it was Braden who went down. They get it back to Schwartz. He's looking for some help. Giovanni putting the pressure on. Nothing is coming easy for the battling Bishop. Schluter has to bring it upfield himself. Boucher signals him, bring it up yourself. Now Ringers. Ringers making the move, switching directions again. That was a mistake he made. He had the man down and turned, didn't know it, and came right back to the defensive man who was down. Open shot, saved by Trell. A rifle shot, oh. saved by Trell, now the outlet. Omar carrying it deep into the attacking zone. The return feed not handled, and we're going to whistle. No possession push. Steve Novak, the big stick defenseman who carried that ball deep into the attacking zone. Number 48, senior out of Simsbury, Connecticut. One of the things that Coach Eric talked about was being able to play six on six, play that half field game, and they have done it very well today. Have they ever? And goes down. Miller carries it in. Saved by Schwartz. Braden in pursuit from behind. Will he get there? Yes, he does. And it's taken away by Hobart. What an effort. Torgler saved by Schwartz. Torgler's in the crease. That's a push. Two Hobart players are in the crease. Torgler just going to take his time to get up. Looks like he was in the middle of the Sahara there. They're really kicking up the dirt. And that'll be a push against Ohio Wesleyan. Yeah, well, that was just a terrific defensive effort to break that play up in the corner, and then they got it to Torgler. Well, they're always looking for the guy that's open there. We see Schwartz getting back. Now the ball is down. He's got to get the rebound. Look at the dust. And there you see Torgler's trying to stay in, but he really took a shot from behind, and 
no possession push, and that puts pressure on Schwartz. Bill Miller on the move again as you watch the goalie Schwartz get set. Braden, they circle Kerwick. Kerwick is down. Kerwick loses it. Kerwick regains it. Matt Kerwick back in the corner. Miller with operating room. Man to man now, I believe. And that's why Hobart's going to the net. Gravani scores again, his sixth goal of the game. Tom Gravani scores again. I believe that Ohio Wesleyan is out of the zone, and that's why we're seeing so much one-on-one -on -one play now by the quicker Hobart players and the feed from Miller. It was Arenio defensively there, but then they got the ball in once again. Gravani has really been able to penetrate and Boy, he doesn't need much room when you get him the ball. His sixth goal and the 12th for Hobart as they really are beginning to score at will. Ball down. Faceoffs have dominated it up to this point. Gravani has seven goals to tie the NCAA record against Nazareth. And back they come again. This time it's Bardwell with a goal. And the route is on. It is now Hobart 13 and Ohio Wesleyan 2. Well, you got to feel sorry for Mike Kressler and the Ohio Wesleyan battling Bishops because they just came into this game with such high expectations. And you see Bardwell just whips that ball high. And they have been able to get down there and get in position all day. And Mike Kressler, it does not seem like he's going to get his national championship today. But it looks like that man may become the legend that maybe that he already is in college lacrosse as Dave Yurick's team commanding 13-2 lead and statistically dominating also as another faceoff will go Hobart's way. Ohio Wesley and feeds the crease. Their shot is wide, but they will keep possession. Well, they've taken 15 shots at Trell, and he's got six saves. So Trell having a, a good day. And you know, they talked about the transition game and that's the way Hobart likes to do it, run it all the time. But they have really played very, very well on that settle down six on six. There's the disparity in shots, 32 to 15. And Rinaldi makes the move now. Here's the shot from outside and Trell or the pipe or something ricochets out across the far sideline. Hobart's gonna get it. You know, we talked about showing something on capsule form. So was that right there as Torgler was right near the out-of-bounds. Ball was still a shot. And Hobart didn't get it that time. But in the past, the hustle has gone Hobart's way. And they do get it, I should say. Torgler's got it as he was closest to the ball. It was a classic example of what's going on this afternoon. Got to be a disgruntled sideline now. Disappointed. Maybe that's a better word. As Hobart has opened up a 13-2 lead. The only goal by Ohio Wesley and Boucher got them both. Symington giving it up to Torgler. He gets the return with a head of steam. Here comes James Symington. Tried to give it up to Drury, and he throws it out of bounds. You know, they had, they had two guys on Symington, and then nobody picked up Torgler. They didn't convert on it, but you can see the philosophy of getting the ball down. And as you said, it's probably a little bit of disappointment at this point on the side. And lots of time left. 7.36 in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter. Now loose play in midfield. They send it back to Schwartz. And it's to Blanchard now. Deep into the box to Alvino. Alvino just has not been in this game. Steve Seibel, number 12, is in now. Spinning move, top of the box, the feed in traffic, and a score. They had the goalie out of the cage, and Sheehan was back in there. And the goal for Ohio Wesley and only their third goal of the game. Dan Hannon, 41, got the ball as Toby Boucher gives it up. And the crease, and one of the few times they have caught Hobart out of position, but a nice play by Dan Hannon, the junior out of Levittown Division at high school, and that area turned out a lot of excellent lacrosse players. Ball down. Let's see where this faceoff goes. 
And a violation on the face. Push. We're going to push. Ball will go over to Hobart. 16 faceoffs now to three for Ohio Wesleyan. Although they're going to have to work a little bit on this one. Simington dodges Schluter. And look at the foot speed this man has. Simington, will he crank? No, he gives it up again. Torgler feeds it in oh. close. That is a gorgeous goal by Drury. Simington gave it up to Torgler, who fed Drury, coming right down the slot. And that's simply beautiful lacrosse. Well, as you said, this is just perfect. Simington, the big 6-3 face-off man, flips the ball out. Torgler looks and sees that he's got a man cutting in excellent position. He gives the ball to Kurt Drury, who puts in the 14th goal just like that. Hobart shows you why they're on the way to winning perhaps their ninth NCAA championship. I was going to say it was appropriate there, the number nine of Drury. And Hobart well in the driver's seat en route to their ninth championship in as many years. Braden, they look for more. Saved by Schwartz. The rebound kicks out at midfield. It's Blanchard now. He's got some operating room. Goes to the right hand. Udemul coming up from behind. The shot saved by Trell. You can't underestimate the way Sean Trell has played. He hasn't been tested all that much, but look at him. Johnny on the spot. Nice out he goes to Fediaka. And Trell and Rinaldi get into a little bit of it. Well, that's bound to happen. I don't think it was anything malicious, just normal give and take, and that man has played an excellent game, as has his defense. Of course, you had Boucher coming into the game with a whole lot of points. He's gotten two today, and Alvino, of course, their star attackman, has been shut out up to this point. Alvino coming in had 58 points, 35 goals, 23 assists. He's their leading goal and assist man, and he has not done anything today in terms of scoring. Ravani, seven goals against Nazareth, six here today. One, X, two, yes. and Drury had it taken away. Pulled down by Walter. Regained by Drury. Drury down to Gravanti. Ravani collects the ball and himself and his teammates. Now sends behind to Miller. What a bright future Bill Miller has for him at Hobart. Only a freshman. Got all American written all over him, doesn't he? Excellent player. There he is, Miller with the ball. Gravanti crossed the goal mouth, intended for Braden out of bounds. Oh, they say deflected by Hobart or by Ohio Wesleyan. So Hobart still keeps it. <laughs> Again, mention the fact that not only are they good, they're they're lucky or fortunate at that point. Mike Presley, hopping man on the sideline, literally. And I'll tell you, he's not going to get it today, but someday, somewhere, that man will win a national championship. Miller to Drury, Gravani to Miller, Miller back to Drury, fires, it's wide and high. So they'll keep it. There he is, Mike Pressler. What a gracious host, and a fine gentleman, and an excellent coach. Out setting up the goals and, and working on the, on the face-off area this morning when we came down to see him. Here's Miller scoring, one-on-one, -on -one. nobody came to pick him up. And he beats Jim Schwartz to make it now a 15-3 game. Miller has his third goal of the game. He's got a bunch of assists as well, at least three and three. Miller, the, the freshman attackman, as we said, the attack from Hobart, very successful. And he just, nobody there, he just goes unmolested. There was nobody to pick him up. And that, Dave, we have seen all day. It started out with Gravanti, same thing. Nobody able to pick him up as they come around from the back. A seven-point afternoon to this point for Bill Miller. It's a name we hardly heard at the beginning of the year. 15 to 3. Ball down. Bouncer that break. Feeding it to Blanchard. Oh, nice Behind play. the back, and he missed the cage. And it had an excellent opportunity. Tom Gravani, we're told, now has 17 playoff goals. See, that's not bad. No, <laughs> three games. You're right. Alvino feeding the crease. 
Not held on to, but they get the ball back. 17 playoff goals, far and away a record. Smashing the previous mark of 12. There's a shot that Trell got a stick on. It goes out of bounds. Previous mark of 12 was held by Paul Goldsmith of Roanoke and by Bruce Yancey of Washington College. So they were wiped out of the record book by Tom Gravani, who's up the previous record from 12 to 17. Now Alvino would like to dent the nets one time. Arvin Tidy's nice job. That he's dropped to the turf. Di Maria up the sideline, gives it up to Gravanti. Beautiful pass as he's decked. But it's in the stick of Burchill. Burchill, the defenseman, cranks and scores. But Burchill scores, and Hobart now leads it 16 to 3. That's the one that really kills you when the big stick guy comes down and of course, they don't need any coaching to take a shot. And Virgil, 32, goes coast to coast, and he cranks that big stick, and there it goes. And that is his first goal of the year, only his third shot of the season. That's why they're so happy at the celebration. They love it when a defenseman or somebody who doesn't get a chance to score finally comes through. Mark Virgil, it is 16-3 Hobart. And there's too much time left in this game for Ohio Wesley. They've got still more than a quarter left to play. Great move at the crease. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going over to the orange clad Hobart Statesman. One of the things uh, we talked about, uh, I think Willie Scroggs mentioned, was the fact that the game aside, Ohio Wesleyan has done a great job of putting this on, this whole big Division Three National Championship, and we certainly have to congrats them. They had a perfect day for it in terms of weather, and the conditions are great, and very, very nice people here in Delaware, Ohio. Right now, I'm sure they wish the game was a little bit more like yeah. their hospitality and the, and the day. It's settled for a little muddy conditions. Right. So the score is a little more even. Right now, it is Hobart 16 and Ohio Wesleyan 3. Three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. If it isn't already, this is the makings of the most lopsided game in Division Three history. Already, it represents the highest goal scoring total, and it just went up by one. Cardwell picks up his third goal I believe 17th for Hobart Bardwell the senior out of Tully New York he's open on the crease they've been able to hit the open people and then watch the shot behind the back and I think Schwartz is going to see that little white ball flying past him in his dreams tonight he has really been peppered Hobart has taken 38 shots and gotten 17 goals most goals given up now by Ohio Wesleyan in at least two seasons. And the highest score ever by a team in an NCAA Division III championship game. Hobart's previous high was 15 two years ago, three years ago against Washington College. Face-off, 18 for Hobart, three Ohio Wesleyan. Bill Miller. Now Hobart starting to substitute some new players off the leg of Castro on the ground, not held by Waldron. Miller's in their pursuit. Waldron picks up the ball. Miller from behind knocks it out of his stick, and it's knocked out of bounds. Guess what, folks? It belongs to Hobart again. You know, we haven't mentioned much about Coach Urich, but, uh, you know, it's expected, I think, that... Uh, He's supposed to win this thing every time they have it, and it looks like he's going to do it for time number nine. But that's got to be a heck of a lot of pressure. He kind of laughs it off, but uh, he must feel it a little bit. Richard Moses, 20, is in the game for Hobart. Ravani's still in there. Ball goes back to Bill Miller. And right now, you can see on the part of Ohio Wesley, and maybe their hearts just are not in it as much as they were certainly easier in the game earlier in the game. 
And when you're down by 14 and you got 2.30 left in the third quarter, very tough. One on one move. Hobart's got him in a man to man and they're taking advantage of it. Here goes Miller trying to wrap it around as he went down. Out of bounds, the race for the ball. It was a shot. Hobart's there. That's an indication. Those legs have got to be awfully heavy now for Ohio Wesley. Yeah, when you're down by 14 and it, it's been warm during the day, you got to be thinking a little bit, boy, my legs are getting tired. But I give them credit. They have just hung in there. They're playing tough across, and the fans are still here watching it. Here comes Moses. Knocked off the ball, but there to get it is Hobart. Monty. Gravanti over the head of Moses at the midfield line. Arvin Tides fell over the stripe. And Quite pushing. He was pushed. Chip Castro has the ball now for Hobart College. He's a senior from Upper Montclair, New Jersey. Tom Gravani. Six goals already. Miller went one way, Gravani threw it the other. It's out of bounds. Disgusted with himself as Hobart. You know, you can't tell kids let down or anything and they're not going to. They just go out and do what they can do. And as you said, though, it's got to be awful tough for Ohio Wesleyan to get those legs to keep pumping when you're down by 14. But they're still working at it. Now we've got a minute 40 to go in this third quarter. Hobart led it 6 to 1 at the quarter and 10 to 2 at the half. Now 17 to 3. The thing at that half is when they put that goal in that was disallowed, it was time had run out. It just really took any momentum that uh, Ohio Wesley might have gotten right away from them. Boucher to Alvino, back to Boucher. There was really no angle for the return pass, but Boucher just simply hustled to it. He's dumped down the sidelines. And we'll get a call going against Hobart College. Earlier this year, the two teams played right here in this field, and Ohio Wesley won that game 6-5 to five in overtime. Get this, Dave. This is going to be the first man-up opportunity for Ohio Wesley, and we're almost into the fourth quarter. 109 left in the third quarter. I should mention, too, that the sister college of Hobart, William Smith, playing for the Women's National Lacrosse Championship today as well. There. Boucher now to Sclafani. Outside the hole for the bounce shot. And Trell is there to save it and come out of there with the ball and lead the team upfield. He fires it way down for Moses. But it's over his head, taken by Schwartz. Schwartz shovels it ahead to Goss. Goss getting it to Kim Hall. Kim Hall carrying it in, giving it up. Getting it back. He's open for a shot. He took a little too much time to get it away. Now a shot by Slafani is wide. And Blanchard keeps it in possession to the battling bishops. You know, to get here, Hobart had to beat Nazareth. 17-12, kind of a high-scoring game. And then Roanoke, they beat 19-6. They have been coming on strong and scoring goals in bunches, but who would have thought they would score this many against a team that was giving up less than five goals a game average? Ohio Wesleyan with the ball, the shot near Chantrell. Boucher threw his arms up, almost in disgust after that. Hobart transitioning well, here they come. Schwartz saves it and breaks it in as he was heading toward the goal. And as he outlets it, the third quarter comes to an end here in Delaware, Ohio. With the score, Hobart 17 and Ohio Wesleyan 3. The Great American Face. Rugged, distinctive, every one an original, deserving of the best. The Great American Razor. Classic, solid, perfectly balanced. It's the Atra system from Gillette. Original Atra pivots for closeness, and Atra Plus adds a white Luber Smooth strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. The Atra shaving system, only from Gillette. The essence of shaving. It's a machine committed to total efficiency. 
a machine that provides clock-like precision. A machine designed for maximum dependability. With the best on-time arrival record. With a commanding 17-3 lead over Ohio Wesleyan. They've exerted dominance in every phase of this game right from the get-go. Yes, they surely have. Face-offs, ground balls, shots. They just, and they've taken great shots and play with great desire. And right there is not a good example. And oh, very out few of yeah. Turnovers without any pressure by Ohio Wesleyan. This doesn't figure to be a very inspired fourth quarter with a score so much uh, in favor of one team. Toby Boucher has two of the three goals. Uh, one in the first, one in the second. Hobart jumped out to a 5-0 lead in the game before Boucher scored. And Hobart answered back nine seconds later to make it 6-1. That's how the quarter ended. Boucher scored again to make it 6-2, but by the end of the first half, it was 10-2. And after three quarters, 17-3. Breakaway. Help. And from behind, the ball knocked out of the stick. Uh, Steve Seibold. Here come the Hobart Statesman. The freshman Miller has got three goals, four assists on the day. Good double ball down, but Hobart will probably come up with it. Drury is there. Man, nice move on the sideline. As he got Walter to slip and fall down. Symington and Torgler are coming on. Torgler had a sensational goal earlier. A 360 move. She stole the ball in the crease area from the goalie, Jim Schwartz. That was way back in the first quarter. I look around, there's only been four man-up opportunities in the whole game. Three for Hobart, one for Ohio Wesleyan. Now Ohio Wesleyan transitions well into the attacking area. Fully committed, they feed it to the other side. They can't get a good shot away. Now Alvino, he's wide. Simic can dump him for his effort. Rob Alvino. They have done a nice job on him. Right now, they've, they've had problems getting the ball to him. Right now, he's being guarded by number 32 for Birchill. Here's a nice spin move and oh. a goal. And a gorgeous one-on-one -on -one move by Sclafani. Paul Sclafani with the move, and he gets the goal. He's a sophomore from Locust Valley, New York, and Long Island. Tried to check him, but he just really penetrates. Ball goes in before he's into the crease. That's a good goal. Steve Novak defending against him for Hobart. Face-off time again. They're going, facing the wrong way there for a minute. Get him straightened out. That's Odomo. And 26 for the Bishops. Chris Paul. Chris Paul is a freshman from Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Sean Trell from Columbus, Ohio. Up ahead to Todd Udemul. Overshoots his man. Moses gets it in the box. Moses lost his glove. Lost his glove, flipped it in midair. Now he's unpressured, so he's time to put it back on. Udemul. Racing toward the near sideline against Schluter. Now he gives the ball up to Bardwell, has to save it. Sloppy play both ways now. With 11 and a half minutes to go in the game. Here's Ian Smith with a run. Smith to Hammond. Hammond gives it up to Boucher. Boucher dumps it in close, score! Rob Alvino for Toby Boucher. And for the first time in the afternoon, Ohio Wesleyan has scored back-to-back -back goals. The leading point maker, goals and assists, Rob Alvino, gets on the scoreboard. It is now 17 to 5. Once more, you're going to look at Rob Alvino right there, the leading point getter, both goals and assists, as you said, Dave, and he gets. His first of the day. Symington on the faceoff with Blanchard. Symington still in there, and Torgler picks it up. 
Hobart is usually answered back quickly in these situations. Schwartz with a good save on Torgler. Now he outlets it. A little bit of momentum shift here. Long way to go. Alvino going left. Alvino uh, held on to it a second too long. Knocked out of there, but Torgler's in pursuit. Will he get there before Ringers? Yes. And Torgler headbands it to Birchall. He got a goal earlier. He gives it up to Moses. In close. Bardwell. Bardwell gets his fourth goal of the game. And that is what Hobart has done all game long. Answer back. Yeah, you're right. They've never really been able to get any momentum. They get a score, and then one scored in Timmington early in the first half, got the ball, and ran right down and got another goal. Set up a goal, I should say. There's the shot. Bardwell low on the offside, or the onside, I should say, of Schwartz. And as we check the Hobart Nets, we'll note there is a new man in there as Shortrell is out of the game as we await the faceoff. Dave Maxwell in the Nets. Dave Maxwell, a senior from Bishop Ludden High School in Syracuse. You know, he played last year. They had a little kind of a musical goalie situation early in the season. Maxwell play, with, and then, of course, Trell. Now they've got Maxwell back in there. You're looking at the... Schweikas, who came yep. out, face-off man. Hobart loses control. But they're on the ball again. They have possession of it. With 10 minutes and 24 seconds to go. Sean Trell's afternoon of work is done. He ended There's up Braden to Moses. They may disallow the goal and say Braden stepped in. And that'll cost Moses a goal. Talking about goalies and Trell on the sidelines. He had 11 saves. And they took 27 shots at him. I thought he played an excellent game. Yes, he did. He really, you know, he came in averaging, giving up 10 goals a game. Here's the hit after. There he is. Yeah, he just took about six, seven steps to it. There, hardly enough to count. So he's going to uh, give up that opportunity as Braden went through the crease. Clearing opportunity. They have had some problems clearing against Hobart today. 18-5. Downfield, Barker is down. Could be a slash. Rinaldi was the man who was dumped. Virchel is going to be guilty of a slash, and that will be the second opportunity. Man up today for the battling Bishops. Virchel, who scored a goal earlier. There have been many goal scorers today for Hobart College, led by Tom Gravani, who has six. Bardwell is four, Miller is three. Bordler is two. Just talking about clear, just wanted to check. Hobart's 20 of 27, 17 of 31 for Ohio Westland. Boucher with shooting low. Oh. And he blistered that one by Dave Maxwell. So Boucher comes up with his third goal of the game. Worth another look. Left hand shot. He's looking ball. Alvino feeds. There's that blister show. Oh boy. That got there so fast. Maxwell didn't really have time to react. You gotta guess when they're that close and shoot that hard, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Out of Bristol, Rhode Island. I believe there's only one Ohio native on this team. David St. Pierre out of Worthington, Ohio. Charlie Blanchard, he hasn't scored in the game. Udamul on him. Now a delayed call coming up against Hobart. Score! Back-to-back -back goal, Steve Seibel from Arnold, Maryland scores. And if, if anything, Ohio Wesleyan is making the score more respectable. They've got a long ways to go to get legitimately back in this one with 9.21 to go. Well, Seibel finds himself all alone. It's similar to what Hobart found, and he goes high on Maxwell. Maxwell 
not able to track that shot down. And Seibel, first goal today. Seventh for the battling Bishops. But as you said, it's 18 to seven. They got a long way to go. Nine minutes, 21 seconds left in this game. Sean Trell, by the way, is a junior. So he'll be back for another year. And I'm sure living in this area, he knows many of these Ohio Wesleyan players. In fact, he and Jim Schwartz, the goalie, both attended the Hobart lacrosse camp some years ago. Well, you know, the thing about Ohio Wesleyan is they lose Boucher, they lose Alvino, two of their big stars. Ball raked out. Boucher's going to pick it up. I think he doesn't get it. He had all the opportunity in the world to control that ground ball. Corbett does a good job. Look out. Alvino is going to unload against Schmidt. We get a whistle. And an elbow is the call. Unnecessary. Unnecessary roughness. One looking minute down, call. Looking down the roster, Blanchard, of course, also graduates. One of the things that they felt coming into the season is they had some good senior experience coming back. They also lose Schluter. Ground balls over two to one here. Uh, Hobart, part of the story is just the hustle that they got out and they came out smoking in that first quarter. Just took the wind right out of Ohio Wesley and not able to do much after that. And I think they just got on a roll, Dave, and it's been really uh, a great game for Hobart and just not the best game at all for Mike Presser's team. I don't think they beat them 6-5 during the year. You'd have to say that they certainly can play better lacrosse than they did today. And the big guns are back on now for Hobart. Gorvani, Miller. Miller's got it. He loses it. Has it again. Gorvani with six goals today. A record 17 in the tournament. Three games. Nazareth, Roanoke, and Ohio Wesleyan. Drury to Gravani. Miller. Bardwell has got four. Gravani. Doesn't take very many bad shots, does he? They're going to take some time off the clock, too. There's no sense in, from their point of view in letting them get back in the game. We'll just take our time down here, take the good shot, and nope. let's show our passing and catching skills. Miller had his pass deflected, broken up, and then he hustled, got the ball back to set up this, and Schwartz has it. Schwartz now overshoots a man, but it's played inside by Sclafani. He gets a step on Sheehan. He feeds to Alvino, and he scores. Rob Alvino gets his second goal. That's three in a row now by Ohio Wesley. And here in the fourth quarter, Ohio Wesley has outscored Hobart five to one. Gets the ball by. That was Sheehan playing defense, but let's watch Alvino, and there's a... That's what you get for coming down here and scoring on us. That's Arvin Tidy's 18. <laughs> Took him down after the the goal. But Alvino comes up with his second goal. He is the senior. The quarterback of this lacrosse team. Well, we He's said be disappointed. We said this fourth quarter would be an uphill battle for these bishops. They're doing a good job in this quarter, but now Arvin Tidy's has it. He eludes one stick check. Feeds the crease nicely. And a bounce shot. Bounce over the crossbar. Braden thought he had it lined up perfectly. Just bounced it too high. 18 to 8. 7 minutes, 23 seconds remaining. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypolcher with the NCAA Division III National Lacrosse Championship. That's Braden. Good move by Braden to shake free of his man, Goss. Drury snuck in from the back door. And it's bottom. Now Gravani. Gravani needs two more goals to set a single game record. Matt Torgler. And here's Drury. Into the box with a step on Smith. Sent it to Bardwell who wasn't watching. Braden's closest to it. Schluter knocks it away from him and out. Good job by Schluter. Wearing those football thigh pads. He's got some pants underneath there. Might have a hamstring problem. I'm sure they don't feel it now. 
I can't get over the fact that both coaches predict the, predicted a low scoring game. For now it's 18 eight. We had 26 goals scored. What do they know? That's right. They're only the coaches. At Ball midfield. Down. Ball picked up by Hobart. Bardwell scoops it up. Ducks under nicely behind the back to Gravani. Comes in. Feeds. He didn't have the angle for the shot. Miller kicks it ahead to himself. It's legal. Miller feeds. Bardwell behind the back. And where is it? Schwartz couldn't find it, but it wasn't in the cage. He was glad about that. At midfield, Torgler. He eluded two men who eventually crashed into one another. 6-10 to go. A lot of action to this last minute. Let's take the air out of the ball down here. They don't want to just... Let's make them work. Let's not get into a run and gun here in the fourth quarter. Miller will go one-on-one. -on -one. He draws the double team, loses the ball. And Hobart, with determination, gets it back. Another ground ball, 44 for them. Simington feeding Ravani. Ravani not forcing anything. There he is, still with the ball. Now he finds room for a shot. It's wide. Just check the latest ground ball stats. 44 for Hobart, 17 for Ohio Wesleyan. Very close to a three to one margin. Ooh, boy, that is a tough statistic. That means that you are around the ball and picking it up all the time. And that tells you that if you can't control the ball, you're not going to get the opportunities. And that's exactly what happened to Ohio Wesleyan. And it yep. happened early. Miller's control the ball much of the time for Hobart. Sending back in front. You heard the sticks combine. That's knocked out of bounds by Goss. Hobart has it. Five minutes and 18 seconds to go. Araneo is in. It's going to replace Goss. And they begin out of the corner. Here comes Moses. Back in the stick of Miller. The feeder. Miller over the head of Gravanti. Hannon has it. Hannon gives it up. Hobart takes it away. Di Maria. Just lodged for the ball. Now Rinaldi. Arvin Tidy's putting some aluminum on him. And here's Blanchard. Blanchard the senior. Blanchard spins. Double ball down. Lanch would like to get in the scoreboard in this game, his final one at Ohio Wesleyan. We're down to four and a half minutes to go. Hobart still moving well. Fediaka. They fed it to Moses, who earlier lost a goal because the man was in the crease. Ball's out of bounds. Well, they know where to look, though, don't they, Dave? They always know, even on the fast break, who's trailing, who's behind me. Let me get the ball out to him. I know where he should be. And they make that nice pass. That one didn't go, but... Hobart always looking to feed that guy on the fast break who's trailing, always in good position. Four minutes, 20 seconds to play in this championship game. Going down on the sideline, right at the Hobart bench, is Eric Stein took a good and legal hit. Delivered by Tom Rossi. We figured to see more of Rossi in this game. We see limited action. Boucher back to the goalie. Jim Schwartz. I'd like to mention the officiating has been really excellent job. You have not seen a lot of flags. You've not seen a lot of useless penalties. Let them play, but oh, was saved by Maxwell. They kept the game going. And Torgler gets that little pass ahead. Whistle as Torgler is shoved to the turf. On the subject of officiating, we know there's always a demand for officials in this game, and if you've played it before, if you're interested in officiating, well, why not contact one of the colleges in your area that plays the sport of lacrosse? Because new blood is always needed. Torgler with the ball, he's going to. Get it to Gravani. 
Yeah. And he tip goes down yeah. the sideline. One of the officials today, the umpire Gary Fallon, has interesting background in athletics. From Watertown, New York, I believe, played football for Syracuse University. I think he was on the 59 team and down at Washington Lee, football coach. And uh, Mike Pressler knows him. We talked about him before the game with Mike. Schwartz to midfield. And rifle it down to Ringers against the retreating Eric Stein. Spin move. He goes down. Fetty Yaka there for the interception. Here comes Frank Fetty Yaka. See the stick. How he caught that ball right in midair and then started right away for the pass. He break. feeds Bardwell. Beautiful movement and Braden's shot is wide. Galloping gate by Fetty Yaka. He switched from the left to the right hand. And he fed Bardwell. Boy, they moved that ball across from wing to wing so quickly and accurately. They have shown not only can they play the transition game, which we saw just there, uh, excellent, good speed, excellent athletes, and they can run all day, but they have, especially early in the game, settled down to a six-on-six -six game and played very, very well. And Gravani early just penetrating that defense. Bardwell tried to sneak it by Schwartz, who made the save. Schwartz has come up with some sparkling saves in the game. But the big surprise is the way Hobart dismantled that zone defense of Ohio Wesleyan. Now Hannon, a crowd favorite here in Delaware, Ohio. At 2.52 to go. New faces coming in the game both ways. Dan Cole of Wisconsin Long Island, a junior in now for Ohio Wesleyan, as is Dave Torgler. And his shot is uh, just wide. Dave Torgler, his brother playing for Hobart, but he is kind of hobbled that knee brace on number four. We'll see him later. You're getting a shot there of goalie Maxwell for Hobart, but moving slowly. Rinaldi makes the move. Rinaldi feeds. Shot for Alvino. Alvino gets his third goal. They've all been here in the fourth quarter. In all America a year ago, Regarded as the greatest attack man in Ohio Wesleyan history, he gets his third goal of the game. It is 18 to 9. Lunged defensively, but Alvino, very powerful, got his shot off as Birchall tried to keep him from taking the shot. And this indeed is the highest scoring game in championship history for Division Three. 27 goals. Two years ago, 23 in the game won by Hobart, 13 to 10 against Washington College. A year ago, it was Hobart beating Ohio Wesleyan 9 to 5. Right now, it's 18 to 9 as we're into the final two minutes of the game. They will take now the ball at the midfield line. Hobart, as they have been the beneficiaries of uh, the ball quite a bit, ground balls, faceoffs, all in Hobart's favor. Odomo into the box. Now it's Moses. Back to Odomo. Where the ball now is Mulhern, who saw early action in this game. Tried to feed it to Kerwick, who had a goal early. Kerwick rakes it around. He comes up with it. Gets out of the crowd. Minute 50 left. Moses to Bardwell, who scored four times. Bardwell makes the move. Schwartz is waiting for him. Down <laughs> he goes. Well, he just said, I'm not giving another goal. This is ridiculous. And right on his back, but good naturedly, because they were kind of patting each other on the back when they got up, taken down by, was it a Rainio or a Goss? I'm not sure. We'll check. But uh, here's the move as Bardwell comes around. That's Rainio right there, 38, that rap checks his takedown. Two points. And we have a timeout taken by Hobart College with a minute and 44 to go in this championship game. <laughs> I guess that wasn't so good natured there, Dave. Bardwell got up and threw the ball. At the conclusion of the game, the winning team will be presented with the championship trophy. We'll try to get a word with Dave York and also the star of this game, Tom Gravanti. Give everybody some water and some last-minute instructions. Let's 
think this game over with 144 left. In Division Three in NCAA lacrosse, the championship game is awarded on a yearly basis based upon the teams that are in the tournament. In Division One, the side of the Final Four, different format uses selected in advance, certainly at least a year in advance. Syracuse, New York, the uh, host of the Final Four of Division One during Memorial Day weekend. And that should be a tremendous tournament. The games played on Saturday and the championship on Monday. And uh, if you're in the area, if you've got some time to travel and looking for something to do, Memorial Day weekend, that's an excellent choice. The final four of college lacrosse, technically the semifinals of the championship game. They've got somebody in a penalty box for Ohio Wesleyan, so there was a penalty called on that. Miller and Gravani is still on. Udemol and Bardwell. Drury will take the shot and the save made by Schwartz. Nice to see him ending the game with some quality saves. Can they hit double figures? If they get one more goal, they'll be there. Right now it's 18 to 9. We've got a minute and 18 remaining in this game. Nice to see, too, that so many of the fans have stayed until the end of this game to award the two teams for their applause. I want to quote the president of Ohio Wesleyan University, David Warren. He says, they play lacrosse and they play it gloriously well, not because they're paid to play, not because they've been gifted with an athletic scholarship, but because they love the game. How true that is. That's true on all levels of lacrosse. Ball down, under a minute. Torgler, well, he's going to get the is very. And uh, it was Sheehan who came down on top of him. I thought for a moment it might have been his brother. I saw a seven. He wears 47. His brother's coming on now. Matt Torgler's coming on the field. But Dave Torgler has come off. So I don't think we've seen the two on at the same time. We've got 46 seconds to play in the game. Man up opportunity for Ohio Wesleyan. Their third opportunity. Fourth. Check that. Ohio Wesleyan working the ball well. Fediaka very active with that big stick. Pulled the rebound down. His outlet was a little bit too high. 25 seconds to go. Fans want to see 10. And a wicked wild shot off the stick of Kobe Boucher. Went right through the uprights on the football goal post. Hobart ball. Very humble bunch. Well, they're, a they're used State to it, State. I think. Yeah, there's Dave Urich on the left. Some of his assistant coaches, Jack McDonald, Mark Van Arsdale, Chuck Ward. Here we go in the final 20 seconds. James Simington from Cheshire, England. Boy, is he tough to bring down like a locomotive. They bring him down, but they don't get the ball from him. And the crowd's going to count it down. Five seconds to go. And it's all over. And for the ninth consecutive year, Hobart College reigns as the national lacrosse champions of Division Three. Nine years this man has coached the team, and nine years he has won it all. Dave Urich, victorious once again. There's your final. Hobart 18, Ohio Wesley at 9. We'll be back. Right Life isn't easy for anyone. And we, uh, quick five goals and a 6-1 to one lead. Well, Dave, if you, you know, I don't think we could have written the script any better as far as getting out of the blocks. We probably haven't played all that well. I mean, played that well all year. We just, we were, we were hot today. There was no doubt about it. Hobart was a hot team, and they picked an awfully good time to, to play real well. I thought everybody did up and down the line. We, we executed on offense, and... Everything that we wanted to do, we, we seem to be able to do. Anything specific, Dave? You know, we talked to before the game, and both you guys, uh, you and Mike, said this would be a low-scoring game. 20, <laughs> 27 goals later. Shows you what uh, we know. Right? Yeah, that's what we said. But seriously, <laughs> what uh, what did you do offensively? It seemed like Gravani was able to penetrate against that zone. He was open quite a bit. Well, I, I think for, for probably the first time since we've played them now for the last few years as a staff, and, uh, myself included, we have a pretty good understanding of what they're trying to do with the zone, and I just thought we had a good scheme to attack it with. 
uh, I'll be the first one to admit that there's a lot of distractions for the head coach the week of the game. And I told the kids after the game, a lot of the credit for this one's got to go to Mark Van Arsdale. He's an offensive uh, coach. Um, that's the tops in my book. And he did a great job of preparing these kids. We had to make another adjustment at halftime because they adjusted right immediately in the second quarter, as a good team would. And we had to, to attack them a little bit differently. But it seemed like every time we had a crack, we took advantage of it. What was that adjustment at halftime? Uh, just a little subtle difference. They had one guy playing two, and we tried to stretch him a little bit and swing the ball the other way after uh, penetrating a little bit early in the game. You said before the game this was not one of your best defensive teams. You certainly had offensive firepower. We saw it today. But the defense played extremely well. They were really well, frustrated. Uh, at times this year, we've we've played great defense. You know, it just hasn't been as consistent a defense, I guess, as we'd like. But you know, they've had the ability to play great defense. And today, I thought they they, they responded very well and, and took away some of their real good players. But you know, you could see as the game went on, when those good players got a little bit of a uh, breathing room, they can stick it. You know, one of the things we looked at, things like ground balls, was just a, a devastating lead in in favor of Hobart. You guys really hustled today, and I think that really took them out of their game early. You guys were all over the field. Well, I think there's a lot, an awful lot of intensity in, in the Orange people. You know, these, these kids do a great job of getting themselves ready to play. Uh, you cannot really appreciate uh, what that locker room was like before the game or during the week. The, the amount of uh, phone calls we get from alumni and from friends and from uh, real Hobart fans that, that, that went out of their way to make sure they knew we were with us. Telegrams from Toronto and, and you name it. That's, that's part of Hobart lacrosse tradition, and I think that's what these kids really savor. And I told them to enjoy this day, you know, regardless of how it went. You know, win or lose, I thought these kids did a great job this year, and we won, and, and we're awfully happy. Going for 10? <laughs> Talking like an <laughs> alum again. <laughs> Absolutely. Dave Yurick, once again, congratulations. Thank you, fellas, and I really appreciate you coming down. Thank you very much. All right. Nine years in a row, Hobart College, NCAA Division III National Champions, winning today by a final score of 18-9. to 9. And in one more statistical look in face-offs, Hobart... 120 to just six for Ohio Wesleyan. And anytime you talk about possession and controlling the game, that is a key, key statistic. So we hope you enjoyed it today from Delaware, Ohio, as Hobart College wins.